pi we're solving 9702 variant 12 this time this is October November 2020 20, 2021 20, okay variant 12 paper 1 <clears throat> let's begin which row shows what all physical quantities must have quite similar to variant 11 it needs magnitude and unit direction is not essential direction is essential for a vector quantity but not all quantities okay what is an alternative way of expressing 43 deci joules so what does deci mean what does deci mean it's one tenth of a meter okay deci is one tenth of a meter so it can be written as into 10 to the power minus 1 meters okay 43 into 10 to the power minus 1 meters now it's either expressed in millijoules or megajoules. So this is basically um, 43 to 10 power minus 1, which is 4.3, 4.3 meters. So let's convert this to, uh, sorry, joules, I mean. I was writing meters by mistake. So it was 43 to 10 power minus 1 joules or 4.3, 4.3 joules, okay? Four point three joules. So this can be written as four point three into ten to the power three millijoules, or four point three into ten to the power minus six megajoules. Let's see what we have in our options. It matches with a, right? If you go from joules to millijoules, it's going to be multiplied by ten power three, and joules to megajoules is multiplied by ten power minus six. A tennis ball is hit so that it leaves the racket with velocity v at an angle of theta to the horizontal. The vertical component of velocity is v y. Okay, so what is the magnitude of the horizontal component of the velocity? It's basically v cos theta, right? just v cos theta but do we have that we don't right sadly we don't then uh, what other options do we have we can apply pythagoras theorem right maybe we know that v square is equal to vx square plus vy square so vx square is equal to v square minus vy square vx is equal to root over v square minus vy square or v square minus vy square to the power half basically so i think the answer is d yeah that's the best answer four cro screens each display away from the screen and the time based setting of each cro is shown um okay so which screens show waveforms of the same frequency interesting so let's find out the frequencies um we basically find out the uh, time period, okay? 0 0.02 into 4, which is 0 Zero point zero eight seconds. What about this? This is zero point zero four into two, which is also zero point zero eight seconds. So yeah, um, one and two seem good. What about this? This was going to be point zero one into two or point zero two seconds, and this was going to be zero point zero eight into four. Zero point three two seconds, basically. So it's one and two. Yeah. Let's go to 5. A student measures the time for one complete oscillation of a pendulum of length L. Her results are shown in the table. She uses the formula this. 
uh, what is the best estimate of the percentage uncertainty in the value of g okay so to do sums like this you need to make g the subject first okay so t square is equal to 4 pi square into l by g g is equal to 4 pi square l divided by t square now the percentage uncertainty of g will go like this 4 pi square is a constant we won't consider that 4 l right 4 l we need to take this 0 0.001 by 0 0.420 right and for t square what are we going to do 0 0.1 divided by 1.3 and since there's a square the two will just come in front right and since they want percentage uncertainty we multiply the whole thing by 100 let's do this so i'm getting a value like 15.6 percent the best answer is 16 so 5 is d okay Moving on to 6, the graph shows the variation with time t of the velocity of a vehicle moving in a straight line. The vehicle moving at 4 meter per second begins to accelerate at time 0. Okay. What is the vehicle's acceleration at time 3? Hmm. I think we need to... We know that the gradient of a velocity time graph is acceleration. I think we need to find out the tangent. I'll try my best to draw the tangent here. Wait. something like this basically okay so it's like um, 7 12 and you know something like um, 0 1 over here right so 12 minus 1 divided by 7 minus 0 so it's basically 12 minus 1 by 7 uh, 1.57 around 1.57 or 1.6 ish I don't think I found it correctly. Wait, I'll, I'll go again. Wait, I think I got this. I think this looks better yeah okay so we have something like this is 11.5 yeah 7 11.5 okay 7 11.5 what about this this is at 0 2 this is good 11.5 minus 2 divided by 7 minus 0 1.35 1.4 so the best answer is C okay Seven, a student is projected vertically upwards from the ground at an initial speed of fifteen meters per second. Air resistance is negligible. What is the maximum height reached by the stone? So basically, it's thrown upwards, right? We're just gonna use v square is equal to u square plus two s. At maximum height, velocity will be zero. Zero is equal to fifteen square minus two into nine point eight one into s. Let's solve this. Fifteen square divided by two divided by nine point eight one. Uh, 11.5 or 11 meters that's the closest answer 7 is b for 8 what is meant by the mass of an object it's basically according to the definition it's a measure of inertia right it's the property of an object that actually resists changes in motion number nine the diagram shows two parachutists, X and Y, moving vertically downwards. The total mass of parachute is Y, and his parachute is twice the total mass of parachute is X and his parachute. Okay, so Y is like 2M, and this is, uh, he's a big boy, and X is just M, right? At this moment, the air resistance on parachute Y is twice the air resistance on parachute X. Okay, so air resistance is also twice compared to x neither parachutist has reached his constant terminal velocity which statement describes the acceleration of y compared with the acceleration of x so his weight is twice mg his weight is just mg so it's like this mg minus r is equal to ma and here twice mg minus twice r is equal to twice m a right now we can actually take two common right mg minus r is equal to twice m a and we actually end up with this mg minus r is equal to m a the interesting fact is that both this 
and this is the same so what guy what can you guys actually uh, conclude the acceleration is the same because a is equal to mg minus r by m okay a is equal to mg minus r by m same so it's b 9 is b okay let's go to the next one 10 the table shows four different collisions between two blocks each of mass 0.50 kg which collision is perfectly elastic so remember guys momentum is always conserved for elastic collisions you just need to compare the relative speed of approach and separation if they match it's an elastic collision so just look at 10a that for 10a what's the relative speed of approach it's 4 minus 0 4 what's the relative speed of separation if two ob objects coalesce that means if they stick together the relative speed of separation or approach is actually 0 so since 4 is not equal to 0 it is not elastic look at number 2 if two objects move in opposite directions we add the velocity we add the speed up to find out the relative speed of separation or approach so 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and since they're coalesced at the end since they coalesce right um, it's 0 again, so 4 is not equal to 0. Then for C, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. And then look at this. After uh, the collision, they are moving in opposite directions, right? So we need to add it up again. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Since 3 is not equal to 5, okay? That's why it's not elastic. Look at the last one. They are traveling in the same direction. Both are traveling to the right. If they're traveling the same direction, you need to subtract, okay? So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Look at this. They're still traveling in the same direction. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Since 3 is equal to 3, D is, in fact, an elastic collision, okay? Hopefully, you get it. Moving on to the second section of the video, 11 to 20. A cylindrical block of wood has cross-section area A and weight W. It is totally immersed in water with its axis vertical. The block experiences pressures PT and PB at its top and bottom surfaces respectively. What is the upthrust on the block? Okay, so remember that upthrust, guys, it is actually, it originates due to the pressure between the bottom and top of the uh, object, actually. PB is much greater than PT. That's why it actually feels an upward force okay so the formula is actually v rho g that's the formula of upthrust now how did we get this though basically it has been derived from the difference in pressure right the origin is due to the difference in pressure multiplied by the area that's the logic because think about it difference in pressure that's actually del h rho g into area and if you think about it if you multiply the cross section area with the height you're gonna end up with volume rho g hopefully you guys get it okay 12 two forces each of many f this is basically a couple forces of same magnitude opposite in direction but like you know parallel Mm, to find out the torque or the net moment, you just need to multiply one of the forces with the distance between them. So it's just Fs, okay? So 12 is C. A mass of 500 grams is attached at one end of a rod of length 1.50 meters. The rod is pivoted at a distance of 25 centimeters from the other end. The rod is horizontal. What is the moment about the pivot due to the mass? okay doesn't the rod have any weight or something so it's basically a um, clockwise moment you can't take the full distance you need to take this basically this is 150 centimeters minus 25 cm right so how much is that 125 centimeters or 1.25 meters so moment is equal to 1.25 meters into the weight of this object which is 500 in 10 power minus 3 kg right into g 9.81 mg 1.25 into uh, 500 in 10 power minus 3 into 9.81 there we go we're getting a value of 6.13 so the best answer is c 13 is c okay okay so for 14 a beam qr is held in position by a wire PQ. The structure is used to form a crane supporting a station load of 4 kilonewtons. What is the force exerted by the beam QR on point Q? 
Okay, so the best way to do this sum, right? If you think about it properly, it's like this. Basically, there's this third force acting. We know that weight is downwards and tension has to act in this direction. So there is a third force that will balance these two forces. Now think about it. If two forces pull this way, what's the resultant of their force? The resultant force gonna be? Basically, it's gonna be over here in this direction, right? Because net moment is zero, so the forces must pass through a point, right? The forces must pass through a point where like all three forces intersect. So their resultant force is gonna be in this direction. Now think about it. So if this is the resultant force, the force on point Q by the beam QR, shouldn't it be in this direction? This is force F. This is the only way it's gonna match, right? This is the only way it's gonna match. There's no other way because these are the only two forces the resultant of weight and tension and this third force right so according to vertically opposite angles this angle is 30 degrees now if you want to solve this we know that all this if the components of f must cancel out so we can say that if uh, sine 30 f sine 30 is equal to 4 kilonewtons right so uh, 4 divided by sine 30 is actually f is equal to 8 kilonewtons right that's why the answer is d up to 15 a metal cylinder totally immersed in water is hung from a needle mirror uh, the cylinder of height l is slowly raised vertically by lifting the needle meter as the base of the cylinder moves from line x to line y above the surface of the water the reading r on the newton meter is recorded the velocity of the cylinder is constant which graph best shows the variation of r with distance d of the base of the cylinder from line x so here's the thing as you go up like when the cylinder comes over here not all of it is immersed in water what will happen then up thrust the value of up thrust will decrease now there are two forces here basically weight and up thrust so as the value of up thrust decreases um, weight will take a greater proportion of the net force so the value on the newton meter will actually increase over time because up thrust is decreasing because the net force the value we see on the newton meter the net force okay that's actually equal to weight minus up thrust so if up thrust decreases the value of the net force will increase get it so over time the reading r on the newton meter will increase do you understand now here's the thing which graph which shows the variation of r with distance d with the base of the cylinder from line x so in all of these r actually increases okay but here's the thing when it's inside water as long as it's inside the water like this the reading won't change here as you can see the reading is changing but it's not possible the reading needs to stay constant because the volume remains the same volume of displaced water remains the same okay now it's between c and d okay the answer is between c and d we need to choose the correct one now the logic it is it will be curved only if the cylinder accelerates but since it's moving at constant speed uh it will also uniformly uh increase okay that's the logic behind this that's why c is the best answer okay hope you get it for 16 a ball is thrown vertically upwards into the air it rises to the top of its path before it begins to fall vertically downwards assume that the gravitational potential energy of the ball is zero at its starting point which statement above the ball is not correct as it rises its kinetic energy is transferred to gravitational potential energy true at the midpoint of its path gp is equal to initial ke um no at the top that's true at the top okay at the top highest point the gp is equal to ke okay so this is not right 17 an object slides with constant velocity across the horizontal sheet of ice friction is negligible a constant horizontal force of 2.1 newton is then applied to the object as shown okay initial direction of the motion of the object is upwards but then it experiences a force from the left 
so it moves to the top right basically so it had a component of velocity upwards but it felt a force in this direction that's why it moved uh, to the northeast a short time after applying the force the object reaches point x at a displacement of four meters from its position when the force was first applied what is the work done by the force on the object as it travels to point x okay interesting so basically we are looking at the work done by the force 2.1 newtons so you can't look at a uh, vertical distance do you guys understand you only need to look at horizontal distance you can't look at vertical distance you only need to look at horizontal distance so basically if you think about it, because this force is acting on the right acting towards the right you can only consider work done that moves the object towards the right so we need this distance basically okay this distance over here so we can use trigonometry right to get this this horizontal distance so we can say that um, cos 30 is equal to adjacent by hypotenuse so cos 30 into 4 is 2 root 3 h is 2 root 3 so This is the distance moved towards the right. Now we know that work done is equal to force into distance. So 2.1 into 2 root 3, right? How much is that? That's 7.3 7 joules. So that should be our answer, 17 C. The energy conversion inside a power station burning fossil fuel can be simplified as shown. So our goal here, remember efficiency is useful by input useful by input so what's the useful energy here basically this electrical energy that we produced it's a power station so obviously so that's the useful power divided by this is the input that we gave in the first place w okay x is lost energy but that doesn't really um, you know affect anything so the answer is a car x is traveling at half the speed of car y car x has twice the mass of car y which statement is correct okay so this is x and this is y so y is 2v, x is v, um, x is twice m, y is just m. Okay, so we can say that this is half into twice m into v square, y is half into m into twice v square. So this is mv square. What about this? This is 4 by 2. So 2mv square. So y has doubled the kinetic energy. Or X has half the kinetic energy, right? 19A looks good. Nice. So 20. The total weight of a motorbike and a rider is uh, 1800 newtons. The motorbike travels in a straight line at constant speed up a hill. So the keyword here is constant speed. The keyword here is constant speed. So... Basically, the useful output power of the motorbike is 36k, 36,000 watts. The total resistive force is resistance and friction on the motorbike and rider is 2400. What is the speed of the motorbike? Key, the keyword is uh, constant speed, right? So we know that the driving force is actually equal to the component of weight and the resistive force, right? So the weight is, the resistive force is 2400. Okay. The weight is 1800 but we cannot take the whole thing we need to take the component okay so driving force is equal to resistive force plus the component of weight w sine theta basically so the driving force is basically we know that p is equal to fv so driving force is equal to power by velocity right so 36,000 by the constant velocity is equal to the resistive forces of 2400 plus the weight 1800 sine 30 get it so 2400 plus 1800 sine 30 uh, then 36,000 divided by answer we're getting a value of uh, 10.9 so the best answer is 11 20 is 11 okay 20 is B 11 so for 21 three springs are arranged vertically as shown 
Springs P and Q are identical and each has spring constant K. Spring R has spring constant 3K. Interesting. What is the increase in overall length of the arrangement when a force of W is applied as shown? So let's try to understand this step by step, okay? Come on. So basically we're gonna imagine one spring. We're gonna imagine one spring only over here. So we're just imagining spring P here with spring constant K. So when a force of W is applied, right? So what's gonna happen is, you know that F is equal to KX and X is equal to F by K. So for the single spring uh, bearing weight W, the extension will be just W by K. But hear me out. Uh, in parallel arrangements, basically the extension becomes halved. The one that we were supposed to get, W by K, instead of getting that, instead of getting E, we're gonna get E by 2. Extension will be halved. So instead of getting W by K, we're gonna get W by 2K for this section, okay? Because for a single spring, it was W by K. So for two in parallel, it's going to be half W by K or W by 2K. Now check this out. R has a spring constant 3K. That means it's really stiff. So we know that F is equal to KX and extension is equal to the same force, but uh, 3K. Okay. So since there's no parallel setup here, it's going to experience the whole thing. So this one is going to be W by 3K. So what's the total extension actually? In this section it's W by 2K, in this section it's W by uh, 3K, right? So W by 2K plus W by 3K, add this up. W by K, half plus 1 by 3, how much do we get? 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3, that's 5 by 6. We're getting 5 by 6 W by K, and the answer is A. Hopefully you guys get it. Moving on to 22. I personally like doing chemistry more. I need to talk a lot for physics. 22. A length of metal wire is attached to a fixed point and hangs vertically. Masses are then suspended from the wire. Assume that the cross-section area of the wire remains constant. Okay. A stress-strain graph is plotted. Okay, remember guys. The area under the stress-strain graph... Okay, the area under the force extension graph gives you the strain energy stored in the spring. And the area under the stress-strain graph... What does it show? The area under the stress strain graph actually gives us the strain energy stored per unit volume. Really important. The strain energy stored per unit volume. That's why the answer is D. Strain energy per unit volume. Okay. Really important. It's something that we need to memorize. The table contains descriptions and examples of waves. Uh, which row is correct? Oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. This is a longitudinal wave. Gamma is um, transverse. Oscillations are parallel. Ultraviolet is also transverse. Oscillations are perpendicular. Sound is longitudinal. X-ray is transverse. And this is perfect. Okay. 23 is also D. Moving on to 24. A sound wave from a loudspeaker is reflected back along its original path by a reflector. A microphone is initial at point X, where the sound intensity is a minimum, as shown. So the microwave is moved towards the reflector and passes through four more intensity minima until reaching a fifth minimum at point Y. So you guys need to understand that we're getting a series of nodes and anti-nodes, right? Like this. At min minimas are basically nodes because there's zero amplitude, okay? So hear me out. Basically, node to node is lambda by 2. This is lambda by 2, lambda by 2, lambda by 2, lambda by 2. So this is 1 lambda, 2 lambda. What about this? 2.5 lambda, okay? So 0 0.5 into 5 is 2.5 lambda. So basically, 2.5 lambda is equal to 70 cm. So lambda is actually equal to 70 by 2.5 which is um, 28, 28 centimeters, okay? So we're getting D, 24 is D, okay? So 25. A train travels in a straight line, a constant speed of 30. The train's horns continues, the train's horn continuously emits sound of frequency 2400 hertz. hertz. A station observer stands next to the train track. 
The train approaches the stationary observer, passes him, and then moves away. The speed of sound is 340 meters per second. What is the maximum difference in the frequency of the sound heard by the station observer? The interesting fact is I did a similar sum in March of 2022. It's quite the same. So this is the observer. The train passes him by. Okay, so when the train is approaching the observer, frequency is maximum. And when it goes away, frequency is minimum. Okay. So the formula is uh, observed frequency is equal to frequency of source into V divided by V plus minus Vs, just like this. So let's find out maximum first, okay? It's going to be 2400 into speed of uh, sound divided by sound minus 30. And F min will be 2400 into 340. Divide by 340 plus 30. Let's do this. Okay, so let's find out the difference now. 2632 minus 2205. Uh, that's 427. Okay, that's the difference. 430 is the closest answer. 25 is C. Yeah. So you determine waves of frequency 30 terahertz. Terahertz are in a vacuum. In which region is this? So 30 into 10 to the power 12 hertz. So never memorize frequency. That's my uh, opinion. I always memorize wavelength. So this is the trick I apply. We know that V is equal to F lambda and speed is 3 into 10 to the power 8 is equal to frequency into lambda, right? 3 into 10 to the power 8 is equal to 30 into 10 power 12 into lambda. So let's find out lambda. 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 30 into 10 to the power 12. So lambda is actually 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 meters. Now think about it. You guys need to uh, remember this over here, okay? This is the ultimate uh, sheet for wavelengths visible light is 10 power minus 7 infrared is at like 10 to the power minus 5 okay it's pretty straightforward so yeah that's it, it should be gx uv imr infrared okay so 26 should be a okay we are 27 now. A station wave is produced on a string that is stretched between two fixed points. They are at a distance of 1.35 meters apart as shown. The speed of the waves on the string is 450 meters per second. What is the frequency of oscillation of the stationary wave? Okay. So basically this is a node, 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 node. Node to node lambda by 2, node to node lambda by 2, node to node lambda by 2. So in total it's 1.5 lambda. So 1.5 lambda is equal to 1.35 meters. Lambda is actually equal to 1.35 by 1.5 or 0 0.9 0 0.9 meters okay so we know that v is equal to f lambda 450 is equal to 0 0.9 into f so 450 divided by answer is 500 hertz frequency is equal to 500 hertz so it should be c 27 is c now what about 28 this is a tricky sum indeed a beam of laser light is directed towards a narrow slit So, it's basically a circular cross-section, understood? We are viewing it, like, think of the screen, you're viewing the screen, you're viewing the panel, just think of your screen as the panel, you're viewing the screen, okay? So, as you look at it, as this laser is passing through the slits, since the slit is vertical, you might be wondering, okay, so light will diffract like this over here, but it's not like that when light passes through the slit since it's circular it actually spreads like this the geometrical shadow is like this okay because think about it in the experience that you've done in your lectures uh, th this was the screen you saw fringes like this maybe right but here's the thing you guys need to understand that 
like this one doesn't actually tell you much about the pattern this one actually tells you about one of those fringes but they want to know about the pattern of light do you guys understand so what you're gonna see here since it's cylindrical you're gonna see something like this one dot over here another dot here another dot here another dot here another dot here minima maxima and so on so if you combine it the pattern will actually be like this horizontal do you understand it's really important okay so hopefully you get it and it's gonna be B so light will spread out like that okay so if the slit if this is an alternate question if the slit was like this instead uh, then yeah C would have been the answer okay hopefully you guys get it train nine two waves each with a constant amplitude interfere and produce an interference pattern the pattern has minima at fixed points where the displacement is zero at all times so they have constant amplitude interfere and produce a pattern the pattern has minima at fixed points okay basically for this to occur for displacement to be zero the uh, individual amplitudes need to be the same okay and they must be anti-phase so amplitude must be same they must have same amplitude this is necessary okay so these are wrong Now they must also be coherent because if phase difference changes at certain points they will totally cancel out at certain points they won't okay so that's also um, wrong so a is the best answer let's go to 30 now light of wavelength 5.5 in 10 power minus 7 meters is incident normally on a diffraction grading the angle between the second order diffraction maxima is 80 as shown okay so you can't use 80 because in d sin theta and lambda Right, the theta actually represents the angle from the zeroth order. So we need to divide this by two and we're gonna get 40 degrees. Now we can use d sine theta is equal to n lambda, right? So we just use d sine theta equals to n lambda and um, theta, uh, d into sine 40 is equal to, since this is the second order, we're gonna use two into wavelength is 5.5 and 10 power minus seven. So d is 1.711 into 10 power minus six, but they don't want d. They don't want the separation of the split, uh, slits. They want the number of lines per meter. They want capital N. So N is basically the relationship between N and D is N is equal to 1 by D, right? So just do that. 1 divided by 1.711 into 10 power minus 6. You're going to get 5.8 into 10 power 5. That is your answer, 30A. Moving on to the last section of the video. Um, we don't have 31 in our syllabus. It's not included anymore. 32 is also excluded okay so 39 uh, 33 what is the coulomb so remember uh, q is equal to it or voltage is equal to work done by charge so q is equal to work done per volt we're just gonna choose the uh, perfect one so it's the electric charge of one electron that's the elementary charge right not the coulomb the electric charge transferred by a current of one ampere in one second looks good this looks good one coulomb is equal to one ampere one second right the kinetic energy gained uh, that's wrong it's not the energy by the way so those are wrong 34 a battery of electromotive force 10 volts and internal resistance 5 ohms is connected to a 5 ohm load resistor. Which change occurs when the 5 ohm load resistor is replaced with a 50 ohm load resistor? Hmm. The current in the circuit increases. Impossible. Because since resistance increases, current must decrease. The potential difference across the load resistor increases. That's true. Because if this changes from 5 to 50, according to potential divider, it will get more, right? So that's true. 34 is B. 35. The graphs show the variation with potential difference of the current I for three circuit components. Okay. So the first one is for a semiconductor diode. Uh, the w second one with constant gradient is a uh, middle wire at constant temperature. Okay. Why is the middle wire at constant temperature? and x is a semiconductor diode so b should be the answer 35 is b okay and that's the characteristic for a, a filament lamp um grab z i mean okay we're almost at the end 
doing 36 now. The electromotive force of a cell is 6 volts. It has negligible internal resistance and is connected across the resistor. The potential difference across the resistor is also 6 because there are no loss volts. The terminal PD is equal to the EMF. The EMF and PD have the same numerical value but represent different processes. Which statement is correct? So EMF represents chemical energy being converted to electrical and PD is electrical to other forms. So EMF is energy transfer from chemical to electrical in the cell and PD is energy transfer from electrical to thermal energy in the resistor. Okay, let's go to the next one. The PD is energy transfer from chemical energy to electric energy. This is completely wrong. Okay. The EMF is energy transferred per unit charge from chemical energy to electrical energy in the cell. And PD is the energy transferred per unit charge from electrical energy to thermal energy in the resistor. Okay, so A is correct. But it's just that C is the better answer. Because... According to volts, volts is equal to work done per unit charge. So we need to mention that. This is super important. Okay, so C is the answer. Let's go to 27 now. Come on. 37, I mean. A battery of negligible internal resistance is connected to three resistors as shown. Check this out, guys. This part is series. So we can find out the... Wait, the potential difference across each resistor is 2. The current from the battery is 0.4 and the current through one of the resistors connected in parallel is 0.3. So this must be 0.1 amperes according to Kirchhoff's first law, right? So what is the current passing through the other resistor? It needs to be 0.1 for sure. It's between A and C. And what is the electromotive force of the battery? So these two resistors, you can actually think of this as these two as 1, right? It's like this, okay? So basically this is getting 2 volt and that setup is getting 2 volts as well. So 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. It needs to be 4, okay? So 37 is A. Pretty straightforward. A38. A battery of EMF 9 and internal resistance 1 is connected to a fixed resistor of resistance 5 and a potentiometer of maximum resistance 3 as shown. The sliding contact of the potentiometer is moved over its full range of movements. What is the maximum value of potential difference? That is measured by the voltmeter okay so think about it you will only get maximum value when you uh, are at the maximum capacity right at this end because if you take the whole length it's gonna be 3 ohms right so let's check it out what's the maximum value possible it's gonna be 3 divided by 3 plus 5 plus 1 into 9 according to potential divider 3 divided by 3 plus 5 plus 1 into 9 that's actually 3 volts a maximum of 3 volts is possible okay minimum of 0 by the way if it was over here an unstable nucleus decays by emitting you know beta plus so in beta plus decay what happens check this suppose this was 2010 after beta plus decay it's gonna become like the proton number will decrease by one we're gonna get a beta plus particle zero plus one and we're gonna get an electron and neutrino so not an entry neutrino what happens here basically proton number decreases right so a proton disintegrates to form a neutron neutron does not change into proton wrong mass energy is conserved this is true and nuclear number is also conserved 39 c 40 which statement is not uh, correct An antineutrino is a fundamental particle. This is true. It's a lepton. Leptons are fundamental particles just like quarks An electron is made up of a quark and antiquark. No, it's a lepton. It's not made up of quarks. Okay, so that's wrong That's it guys so I am going to link paper one the playlist for paper one up here and I'm going to link ON21 variant 11 over here and ON21 variant 13 down here. Okay, and remember to subscribe to the channel. 
keep on supporting the content okay and if you have other questions just feel free to comment down below and i'm taking requests as well for other papers just let me know which uh, years you want me to solve all right see ya